Okay, this is my new um, Commodore 128, and um, when I say new, not just new to me, it, it's a new um, computer based on a, a new motherboard, Commodore 128 motherboard. So it boots into to regular Commodore Basic 7.0, 128 mode. Can hold down the Commodore key. And it boots into uh, Commodore 64 mode. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what's, what's inside this computer. Um, the the top is from a the top part of the case is, is an actual from a Commodore 128, and uh, has a original Commodore 128 keyboard. Um, pull off the uh, D and the keyboard connector. Okay, so this is a C128 Neo uh, motherboard, and um, as you can see, it's uh, based on a standard Commodore 128 motherboard. It looks almost identical. Uh, I've uh, put sockets throughout for, for all the all the chips. Everything that's socketed, I made sure it it uh, had a socket. Um, so building this board, there were a couple issues with um, sourcing some of the components. Um, the hardest components to that, that I found, the hardest and most expensive component to find was actually the square power connector. In fact, it got to a point where I was thinking about putting in a Commodore 64 power connector. Um, the rest of the parts were fairly easy to, uh, to find. Um, the other part that was a little difficult to find was um, this this connector right here, keyboard connector. You can't really buy that part anywhere. Um, so what I ended up doing was improvising. It is a um, it's based on a DB25, and so like if it's, it's this was designed to be both a Commodore 128 and Commodore 128D motherboard. So um, this was designed to have the, the, the right-angled DB25 connector uh, come out of the, the D model. And when I say D model, I, I mean the actual Commodore 128D, the, pl the plastic cased version with the keyboard on the bottom uh, and the handle on the top, which are, are actually quite rare. Um, the Commodore 128D that we are most familiar with, at least I was most familiar with, and that I had, back in the 80s was a, is known now today as a Commodore uh, 128 D DCR. Um, CR, the CR added to the D for cost reduced. And the, the layout of that motherboard is a little more dif little different compared to the, the 128 or the 128 D model. The biggest uh, difference uh, I think is uh, the cartridge port or the cassette port here has been relocated over here on the motherboard and there's uh, some cost saving. Uh, there's a there's another um, like a square uh, chip that's in this area that replaces some of the other uh, chips. And also, uh, I, I think they used a, a different version of the uh, VDC um, chip. I think this was a E564 or E563 when, whereas the the DCR used the E568 chip. Um, the, let's see, the, the other difficult items to find were this component, this filter. And um, so I actually found a, there's a small little circuit board that you can buy that converts this, this layered uh, filter to, to that. Um, and I actually read later that that filter may not even really be necessary. Um, it was just necessary for uh, for the board to pass FCC, and if that's the case, then if you don't have this component, um, I think this is L5 on this board, uh, you can actually just jumper the the wires over and bypass it altogether uh, w without any issue. I haven't tried that, but um, I just uh, you know I wanted to make the keep all the components as as original as possible. Um, I have a, a 
modulator delete board. This is just a, a standard modulator de delete, same as the Commodore 64. Uh, I believe the pinouts are identical. Um, this is just a standard uh, DB9 right angle connector for the, the 80 column video out. Um, and then the, the serial and, and video connectors are the same as on the Commodore 64. Cartridge ports the same as the Commodore 64. Um, let's see what else. Um, the, the other thing that was difficult with this build, well, first of all, this build required a lot of soldering. Um, it probably took me, I'm guessing, somewhere around 20 to 30 hours to, to solder this um, over the course of three to four weeks. And, you know, I got to a point where I, I didn't have the filter, this filter, and so I was trying to figure out, you know, research what, what I needed to do to, to replace that. Um, so um, it, it took a while, and then the, another thing I was waiting on was this, this power connector. I was trying to figure out what to do about getting power into this, this board. Um, when I initially uh, started up this system, um, it was a blank screen, and um, couldn't figure out why, what was going on. So basically what I did was I you know, double, tri triple, quadruple checked all the solder joints, um, started you know, using the, the, the dead test cartridge. Um, and what was interesting was the dead test cartridge that I had, um, it, it played, if you, if you lift it in long enough, you could hear the SID chip test. So it was a blank screen, but the SID chip test was ha happening. So that meant the computer was alive, but the SID chip test sounded kind of warbly, uh, and it sounded like it was double or triple speed. Uh, it was really strange. So couldn't figure out what it was. Um, well, after spending many hours, um, there was actually a really small trace on the back of this that had been cut at some point. Looked like I, I had nicked it with the maybe a, a soldering iron or a screwdriver or something, or, or maybe it, it got scratched um, while I was uh, flipping the board over a couple times. Um, but once I was able to, to locate that, that trace cut and then uh, solder in a bodge wire, um, the computer booted right up. So I wanted to point out some uh, various components um, of this board and what I did. To uh, to build it, um, this is a this is the 8701 uh, chip here, um, but this is a new, brand new uh, version of the 8701. Drops in, and you know I can't tell the difference between the that 80 this new 8701 and, and the, the old uh, stock 8701 that I have. Um, this is a 6581 SID chip. It's just a plain SID chip, same identical chip as in the um, the Commodore 64, um, I, I, I did hear that there were versions of the Commodore 128 that used the 8580 SID chip, which has a slightly different voltage. I believe it uh, uses 9 volts instead of 12 volts. Um, but, but on this board, the C128neo, the, the, the SID chip uses the 12 volt SID. Um, over here is the 8722 MMU. Uh, these are pretty easy to find, and they're fairly inexpensive compared to some of the other chips on this board. Um, they, I mean, they, they really have no use other than in the Commodore 128. Um, same over here with the, the 8721 chip. Uh, I believe that's the PLA for the, the Commodore 128. Um, there aren't any new alternatives, um, that, at least that I'm, I'm aware of, that, that uh, you can buy to replace these, and you know, just frankly, they're they're fairly inexpensive. The originals, so I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, demand for a new version of those. Um, the 8502, well, the, the C128 is unique in the fact that it actually has two two CPUs. It has a, a Z80 here, and then it has the 8502, which is a custom version of the uh, 6502 and the 6510. They're, they're not pin compatible with either the 6502 
or the 6510. Um, and that's kind of a shame because these chips are actually a little on the pricier side and they're, they're hard to find. Um, they're not super hard to find. They, they, they pop up every now and then, but um, they're, they're starting to get harder to find. And in my experience in Commodore 128s, a lot of times this chip is prone to failure. Um, so it would be nice if um, there were there was a, a replacement, a new replacement. I know that someone's working on a 6510 um, generic 6510, a new version that's like ARM based that uh, also has an 8502 mode. So that would be um, great to have in the future. Um, and then of course there's 6526 CIA here and over here, and these are. Um, identical to the, the 6526 CIA used in Commodore 64, which, uh, quite frankly, 6526 chips are starting to become harder to find. And um, I mean, they're they're kind of they control the I/O on the the board, or a lot of the I/O. Um, so things like your joysticks and keyboard, um, they that's that's how the computer reads those components. Um, so. They're actually getting harder to find, I found, and um, so um, it would be great if somebody came up with a a, a new version of 6526 that was compatible. Um, you know, unlike my Commodore 64 build, where you know a vast majority of the chips are, actually have um, new components available, the Commodore 128 really doesn't have that. Uh, here's the um, the VIC-2 chip, which is the um, this one is a 8564, and that is actually an NTSC chip, which is why I, I mean, th this chip's a little on the pricier side, as are most VIC, VIC 2 chips. Um, but I chose to go NTSC with this board because that was what I had available. Um, 8563 VDC is actually uh, a fairly rare, hard to find chip. Um, it's a little expensive too. Well, I think it's probably the priciest chip that I, I found uh, that I had to purchase for the, for this build. Um, and then also, instead of, uh, you know, I, I put in the full 64K of RAM for the, the video memory. Um, this is just standard 4164 uh, RAM, um, same as in Commodore 64, or same as the Commodore 64 early models that used the 4164 RAM chips. Uh, here's the video RAM. These are fairly easy to find. Um, and this, I believe, is the character ROM. Here's more ROM. Some of these ROMs have uh, it's the Commodore Basic ROM, the 64 ROM, the, the um, Basic 7.0 ROM. I believe there's like a high and a low uh, ROM address ROM for for each that have different um, areas that map to different areas of memory. Um, all the, the diodes, resistors, capacitors, uh, filters are brand new. Um, you can order them online from the large electronics retailers. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. This this is meant to be empty. This was a, a expansion slot. I know that, that you can add ROMs for things like Geos, from the Commodore 128 for Geos 128. Um, there's some spots over here that are empty. These components are, are meant for the 128D um, version. Uh, I believe these are like the resets for the 1540-1571 drive that's embedded in the, the D version, as well as the power connectors for the 1571 drive. So yeah, that's um, that's it for the Commodore 128 or C128 Neo board. Um, I would say this, this, this build was a lot more complex than my um, Commodore 64 builds. I mean, the Commodore 64 builds pretty much just, at least in my experience, I soldered them up, put everything together, plugged everything in, gave it power and video, and turned it turned it on. This build is is a lot more complex. There's a lot more work, uh, a lot more to it. I mean, it, essentially, you have, you have two CPUs, two video chips, and uh, a lot more potential to to go wrong. Uh, it's it's I'd say it's about five to ten times the work that was building a Commodore 64. Actually, more like about five times the work um, and the, compared to the 25407 
Commodore 64 board I bought. So yeah, I th I'd say I'd recommend this build to, to anybody who uh, who's interested in um, building a Commodore 128.